Observers have historically caused lots of debate and discussion in quantum mechanics. But if we treat observers as quantum systems, then we can think of each observer existing in their own bubble. And all the paradoxes involving observers can be resolved. Welcome back to the Quantum Paradoxes series, where we understand and resolve quantum paradoxes using quantum circuits. Last time I explained the Schrodinger's cat paradox using a quantum computer, exploring how a large object could in principle be put in a superposition of two different states. In 1961, Nobel laureate Eugene Wigner took this idea one step further with the Wigner's friend thought experiment. Wigner's friend is the clearest demonstration of the famous measurement problem of quantum mechanics. By turning Wigner's friend into a quantum circuit, I'll show you how the measurement problem can be resolved. If you're not familiar with quantum gates and quantum circuits, then I recommend taking a look at the Basics of Quantum Information course on the IBM Quantum Learning Platform before continuing with this video. You'll find a link in the description. Wigner imagined that his friend measured a quantum system in a superposition of two states. Let's model this quantum system as a qubit which starts in an equal superposition of 0 and 1. When Wigner's friend measures the qubit, the friend sees a single outcome, 0 or 1. The friend declares, right now, my measurement has projected the qubit into the 0 state, or right now, my measurement has projected the qubit into the 1 state. So let's start coding Wigner's friend with Qiskit. To model this as a quantum circuit, I use a qubit to represent the memory of Wigner's friend. Both the quantum system qubit and Wigner's friend's memory qubit begin initialized in the zero state. Then to prepare the system qubit in a superposition, I apply a Hadamard gate. The Hadamard gate maps the qubit to a plus state, which is this expression here. Then to model Wigner's friend's measurement of the system qubit, I apply a control not gate with the system qubit as a control and Wigner's friend's memory as the target. Then if the system qubit is zero, the memory qubit records zero. And if the system qubit is one, the memory qubit is flipped to a one. And you can see this entangled state that we get after the C not gate. So now let's run the circuit. We can see that Wigner's friend either sees zero or one in each run. Imagine that until now, Wigner has been completely isolated from his friend. So before Wigner finds out his friend's declaration of which outcome his friend saw, then from Wigner's perspective, his friend and the qubit are still in an entangled superposition. A superposition of the qubit being zero and the friend's memory being zero and the qubit being one and friend's memory being one. Then Wigner asks his friend what outcome his friend got. At this point, Wigner finds out a single outcome, zero or one. Then Wigner declares, right now, my measurement has projected the qubit and my friend into the zero state, or right now, my measurement has projected the qubit and my friend into the one state. To model Wigner's version of events as a quantum circuit, we need to introduce a qubit for Wigner's memory and a C not gate to entangle Wigner's memory qubit with his friend's memory qubit. Then finally, we'll need an irreversible measurement operation on Wigner's memory qubit. So here's what the circuit diagram looks like with Wigner's qubit and his friend's memory qubit. And then let's run this circuit. And again, Wigner sees a single outcome of zero or one when he finds out his friend's measurement outcome. So when was the qubit actually projected into one state? If the act of observation causes an irreversible collapse, then there is a contradiction. Wigner's friend says that the irreversible collapse happened the moment the friend measured the qubit. Whereas Wigner says the irreversible collapse happened the moment Wigner measured his friend's outcome. Let's look at the full quantum circuit from Wigner's friend's perspective. 
So here we have the Hadamard and Synop for Vigna's friend, then an irreversible measurement for Vigna's friend, followed by the C0 for Vigna's measurement and an irreversible measurement of Vigna. Now let's compare this to the full quantum circuit from Vigna's perspective. Here we have the Hadamard and C0 for Vigna's friend's measurement, then a C0 for Vigna's measurement, and we only have irreversible measurements after the control knot gates. Comparing the two quantum circuits, we see that they disagree on whether the irreversible measurement on Wigner's friend's memory should happen before the control on the final C0 gate or after it. The principle of deferred measurement in quantum computing tells us that pushing an irreversible measurement through a control in a quantum circuit will make no difference to the distribution of measurement outcomes. So we'll always get the same distribution of final outcomes either way. We can see this from running simulations of both circuits. So the one from Bigner's friend's perspective has 0, 0 and 1, 1, both with equal probability. And then running the one from Wigner's perspective, again, we have 0, 0 and 1, 1 as the measurement outcomes with equal probability. However, Wigner and his friend disagree on the explanation for those outcomes. We'll see in the next video how in a modified circuit, the difference between Wigner and his friend's explanations actually leads to different final outcomes. This contradiction between Wigner and his friend's accounts of where the irreversible measurement should go is a version of the famous measurement problem of quantum mechanics. The conventional explanation of measurement in quantum mechanics is known as the Copenhagen interpretation, which says vaguely that observation of a quantum system causes it to irreversibly collapse into a single state. The Copenhagen interpretation is so loosely defined that it gives no explanation for how measurement actually happens. It can't resolve the Wigner's friend paradox because it simply doesn't say anything else about measurement which could explain whose version of events is right. One resolution to the Wigner's friend paradox is to get rid of irreversible measurement operations altogether and treat all measurements as entangling interactions between quantum systems. Treating both Wigner's friend's measurement and Wigner's measurement using this approach leads to the following quantum circuit. So here we, after the Hadamard on the system qubit, we have the control knot for Wigner's friend's measurement, the control knot for Wigner's measurement, and there's no irreversible measurements in sight. Here we have no contradiction between the experiences of Wigner and his friend. Wigner's friend sees a single measurement outcome when the friend enters the entangled superposition with the qubit, and Wigner sees a single measurement outcome when Wigner has an entangling interaction with the friend and joins in that entangled superposition. So then the final state is given by this state vector, which is a superposition of 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. So treating Wigner and his friend as fully quantum systems without any irreversible measurement operations resolves the paradox. I like to visualize this resolution using bubbles. Before they interact, we could imagine the system qubit, Wigner's friend and Wigner all being in separate bubbles. Once Wigner's friend measures the qubit, their bubbles combine into the same bubble. Then when Wigner finds out the measurement outcome from his friend, Wigner combines into their bubble too. Building on this kind of intuition, some quantum researchers recently started using the term Wigner bubbles to refer to different observers before and after they have shared measurement outcomes. This is especially useful for some of the more complicated extensions to Wigner's friend that I'll cover in the next couple of videos. Now, if you watched my previous video on the Schrodinger's cat fault experiment, you may have noticed a pattern emerging. My Wigner's friend quantum circuit is exactly the same as my Schrodinger's cat quantum circuit, but with the atom, cat and observer replaced by the system qubit Wigner's friend and Wigner. So here I have the quantum circuit from the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, and you can see that if we just swap atom, cat and observer for system qubits Wigner's friend and Wigner, the circuit looks exactly the same.
The apparent paradoxes arising from both of these thought experiments are very similar in that both can be resolved by applying quantum theory to macroscopic systems such as detectors, observers and the environment. However, the thought experiments point out different problems in quantum mechanics. Schrödinger's cat shows the absurdity of applying quantum mechanics to macroscopic systems, since it means a cat can be dead and alive simultaneously. On the other hand, Wigner's friend points out a contradiction with the vague notion that observation causes irreversible collapse, since observers will disagree about when the collapse happens. Wigner's friend in fact reveals the problem with a naive solution to Schrödinger's cat. One might say the cat is an observer, so it will collapse the quantum state of the radioactive atom and never itself enter a superposition of states. Wigner's friend demonstrates that this reasoning leads to a contradiction, since the observer of the cat and the cat itself will disagree about when the irreversible collapse happens. So could we actually test out whether Wigner's friend does an irreversible measurement or not? A few decades after Wigner's original thought experiment, quantum physicist David Deutsch came up with an insightful twist on Wigner's friend. A thought experiment to experimentally test whether observation causes irreversible collapse. Amazingly, without Deutsch himself realising it, this was his first proposal for a quantum coherent universal quantum computer. I'll explain Deutsch's literally mind-twisting extension of the Wigner's friend thought experiment in my next video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how Wigner's friend reveals a contradiction in the idea that observation causes collapse and the resolution in terms of each observer seeing a single outcome within their own quantum bubble. To find out more, take a look at the Jupyter notebook in the description with all of the code from this video and the blog post also in the description. See you next time!